What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about my meditation retreat at the Dharma Center of Canada. So the retreat was absolutely fantastic. It was such a beautiful experience and I'm so glad. I have no regrets. I'm so glad that I did it. Um, I got a lot more out of it than I was anticipating that I would. That being said, I, I wasn't really going in with any expectations so I wasn't really anticipating much uh, and I was consciously aware that I wasn't going to set any expectations because that can be a bit of a trap when we set uh, expectations that's kind of what we're focused on and then we're not present so I didn't go in with any expectations I did go in with intentions my intentions were to really slow down and to be able to explore the depths of my awareness and enhance it of course that's what the meditation practice is all about it's about enhancing your mindfulness so those were my intentions um, I think emphasis on the slowing down because meditation no matter where you are is always about those other things that I listed and you could say that it's always about slowing down too but that was my uh, my intention so I'll talk a little bit about the insight that I got, um, well, first of all, it was from Friday, September 17th to Tuesday. So it was four days and today is Saturday. So I've had, you know, a few days to settle back into the, the motion of daily life without uh, meditating all day. And I've noticed some very profound effects. It affected my consciousness in a really big way. And you know, if you have effects, something affecting your consciousness, it's going to affect the trajectory of your life. And I can already sort of see that panning out. And uh, it's kind of exciting. It's something that I'm happy about. So some of the big, big takeaways that I got from this retreat were that interest and fantasy of the mind have an inverse relationship. So what I mean by that is the more you're interested, and when I say interested, I mean in, in what's going on around you here and now, the less you're going to be fantasizing in your mind about you know the future, about the past, the less you're going to be creating these, these stories and these narratives that inherently are untrue and cause us a lot of grief and a lot of suffering. So being interested in what's going on around you here and now is a really really good way like when you think about it like that it's a really good way to stay grounded to stay present and to stay mindful now here's the thing it has to be genuine you can't just tell yourself to to get interested but what i noticed uh, especially from not having any technology for four days is that because of how stimulating our technology is, it's, it's really distracting. It can really make us think about the past and the future a lot and take us away from the present. So just having that absence, the technology being absent was a, a really easy, not an easy way to stay interested, but it, it, it's a hindrance to being interested in here and now. So Kind of putting that off to the side uh, was really effective and since i've been back i'm sure my i haven't checked but i'm sure my screen time is like 25 percent of what it normally is like i haven't been i've been intentionally not using my technology um unless i have to like right now for example i'm, I'm shooting this video and then i'm gonna have to go edit it with some technology but you know when you do use it, using it mindfully too is a, is a really big help. You can go check out my video on understanding habits and addiction in the age of technology. I believe that's what it's called. But the thumbnail is a, is a phone with some headphones wrapping somebody's wrists around. So you can go find that on my channel uh, to learn more about that. I dive into some of the science there. But yeah, to, to keep going on that, got a little off topic. Interest and fantasy have a directly inverse relationship. So staying interested in what's around you and what's going on here and now is a really, really good way to stay present. And when you're more present, you're more peaceful. Like I said, you suffer less because the fantasizing mind 
isn't so active. Now, a really big way that uh, I was able to, to kind of be interested was each day we focused on a sense at the beginning of the day. So I'll lay out what the day looked like first. So every morning the bell ringer would come around at 6.30 and wake everybody up, ring the bell in front of their cabin. And um, we would meet at seven for the first session of the day. That would comprise of some mindful movement and a guided meditation on the sense that we were gonna be focusing on for the day. So the first day we focused on sight and then sound and then touch. And the last day we integrated a smell and taste into a, a final meditation to kind of take home with us. But those were the, the big three that we focused on, specifically sight, sound, and touch. So we would have a guided meditation from one of the teachers in the beginning of the day on the sense that we were focusing on. And um, then we would have breakfast. Then we would have our next session, which would comprise of a meditation sit that would last anywhere from like half an hour to an hour. And then a discussion, an open discussion with some Q&A. Um, you know, we would kind of discuss the way we notice our consciousness shifting, some insights that we were having from uh, focusing on sight or sound or touch, whatever we were focusing on that day. And then we would go to lunch at one. So that would last about, you know, till like 1230. Then we'd go to lunch at one, have lunch. We would have another session at 230. And this would comprise of a sit, a meditation sit. And then we would split up into groups and do some work. So the retreat was actually called Meditation in Action, uh, which, I, which I really liked. It's, that's a really valuable thing to focus on because our meditation practice is on the cushion, but it's called a practice because it's about how can we take this off of the cushion into our lives. Right? We're not just going to be sitting all day, every day. Um, so yeah, how can we take our mindfulness into our everyday life? So we practice that uh, with some work that we would do. And that was, that was really good. That was really, really helpful. It was really effective to be able to take away the insight and the, the shifts after the retreat into everyday life. Um, So after that, we would come back, we would have another sit, and then we would go to dinner at six o'clock. After dinner, we would have another sit at 7.30 and another discussion. That would wrap up at around 9.30, and then it would be off to bed. So that's kind of what the, the days looked like, or at least the full days. We had three full days and two like half days. Um, that was a really good schedule, actually. That was... I really enjoyed that. We probably sat for a total of like two to three hours every day, which isn't very much at all actually for a meditation retreat. Uh, but this, I didn't mention, this was also a young person's retreat. So a lot of people there were, I wanna say relatively new to their meditation practice. Some people were saying that they only meditate for 20 minutes a day. So to go from 20 minutes a day to two to three hours a day, um, you know, it can be a lot. I think that's why they kept it at that. To do a Vipassana meditation retreat, for example, you're probably meditating, doing either sitting or walking meditation for like eight to 10 hours a day. Um, I've never actually done one. This was my first retreat um, and I was really, really happy with it, as I said. So noticing the Inverse relationship between interest and fantasy was a really, really big insight. Um, my mindfulness, my awareness has been deeply enhanced as I've been back and as I've been settling back into the motion of daily life. I found myself a lot more relaxed, a lot more calm uh, while still being alert, very alert a lot more conscious of the tension in my body, a lot more conscious of my breath and the way those two connect. So if you're conscious of your breath, it's going to be a lot easier to be able to let go of the tension in your body. Oftentimes we only breathe into our chest. So I found myself, I'm checking in with, you know, my tension and my breath like a few times a minute. 
which is really, really effective. It's, it's really good at being able to just overall be at peace and be happy with yourself and with your day and with your life. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. That's why we do anything is to be happy. So sometimes we think things make us happy and in the long run, uh, they can actually, it's, it's a trap that can make us quite miserable. So the spiritual path, the, the path of enhancing your mindfulness has been pretty much, well, I don't want to say the only thing, but as far as resulting in peace and happiness, it's at the top of the list for sure, at least in my experience. And I would say in most people's experience that have dove into a mindfulness practice, it's a, it's a true path, so to speak, instead of a lot of the false paths that are out there that seem to promise happiness and uh, will eventually betray that promise. So, another really, really big way that this has affected me, and a lot of you might be able to, um, to find some interest in this, is that before this retreat, I've been meditating for a few years, right? I started meditating probably four years ago. I was still in high school. And my practice has, um, you know, really evolved. Sometimes it's been really, really consistent with like a half hour every day, uh, maybe for like months at a time. And sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll find myself not sitting for two days in a row, even like last month. I found before this retreat, my meditation practice really felt like something that intellectually I knew was good for me. And so I should do it. It's like, I know this is really good for me, so I'm going to do it. But there was still a part of me that really had to, to kind of grab myself by the shoulders and put myself onto the cushion. And now that doesn't feel like the case at all. After this retreat, during the closing circle of the retreat, we were sharing some of the really big takeaways. And that was, I realized that was my biggest takeaway is that now I look forward to my sits. And I'm, I'm really grateful just for the opportunity and for the lifestyle that I have, um, you know, that I can even have the time. And I already hear people kind of making excuses like, oh, yeah, see, you have the time. I don't have the time. It's a matter of priority. Uh, I'm really grateful for being able to practice. And since I've been back, I've been sitting for over an hour every day. And that's probably something that I've never done for more than five days in a row before this retreat. And today is day five. It's about two o'clock right now. And I've already done a sit for a half hour. And I plan on doing at least one more for the same amount of time. Um, so like I said, I've, I genuinely look forward to my practice now. And it's, it's because I, I'm kind of riding that momentum from the retreat where I feel the mindfulness permeating throughout the course of my entire day. And this isn't something that I've felt to this magnitude before. And I haven't felt a sense of peace to this magnitude before uh, as consistently anyway, either. And uh, maybe you can feel it off of my energy from the video. Um, I know a lot of people that I've interacted with have told me right off the bat that I, I seem more calm, I seem more tranquil, a little more zen out, if you will. And I, I definitely feel that in myself. Uh, so it's no surprise that people can feel that off of me as well. It's a newfound awareness 
which was previously only an intellectual awareness about how important practicing mindfulness really is. And it seems as though I'm meditating in action all the time now. And that'll happen, I guess, if you sit for over an hour every day and really stay connected to the practice and to the mindfulness. So that was um, a big, big takeaway from this. And I think the biggest way that it's affected my, my consciousness And really this, the senses being able to find, I mean, I'm staring at a tree right now. That's just above the camera outside my, my balcony door here, which is behind the, the rig I have set up. And um, yeah, the higher the interest, the lower the fantasy. And meditating specifically on the senses I found was a really, really deep, like it was a really... It opens a deep capacity to be connected to everything that's around me. And actually, um, after I had a sit, I was going for a, a walk in nature a few days ago and I had a bit of a non-dual breakthrough, if you will, where that connection came full circle into union. And there was nothing to connect anymore because there was just all that is. The boundary between this and that subject and object completely melted away. I'll get into that in another video. I won't go any deeper than that. I didn't really have plan to say that, so I want to make some, some plans on sharing that experience. Yeah, meditating on the senses was a really, really uh, big door that was opened to, hype, to help heighten the interest to what's going on around you. I was with a friend and I was showing him some of the mindful movements that we learned uh, on one of the mornings of the retreat. And this friend of mine also has a, a meditation practice and he's been at it for a few years. And I think he sits probably for like 45 minutes every day. And he said something that really made me laugh. And it's true. He was, <laughs> he was doing the mindful movement and he was like, wow. He's like, it's, it's, I mean, it never ceases to amaze you. It's, it's brand new every time. It's always like a, a birth and a, a death and a rebirth happening in each passing moment. And he was saying, it's really pleasure. Like mindfulness really brings you a pleasure, even in pain, where there's mindfulness, there's pleasure, so to speak. And that was an insight that he kind of had right in front of me and it really resonated, it rang true. So yeah, that's my experience on uh, the meditation retreat that I just went on at the Dharma Center of Canada. I'd like to thank the Dharma Center of Canada, uh, Marion and Marta, the people who really organized the retreat and who were cooking and really just taking care of everything in the main house. And I would really like to thank my teachers, uh, Terry Hagen and Mala Sika. Thank you so much. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. And I'll definitely be back. I won't be a stranger. <laughs> That's for sure. So all in all, if you're thinking about going on a meditation retreat, I highly recommend just diving into it, doing it. And if you are anywhere within a five hour drive of the Dharma Center of Canada, even more, honestly, like take a flight if you want to. It's a beautiful place. I felt the energy of that calm, alert awareness as soon as I drove onto the property. It's 400 acres, of, and it's mostly untouched, but it's 400 acres. There's a lot of different structures there, a lot of beautiful monuments that they have there. And um, yeah, it's just such a, a sacred space. I'll definitely be back for more retreats there. 
Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. If you're thinking about uh, doing a retreat and you have more questions for me, if you have some questions for me on anything um, that I said here, you can go ahead and leave me a question in the comments. Or you can even reach out to me on Instagram and uh, ask me a question there if you wanted to have a private discussion. And as always, uh, I have my offer still standing of one free coaching call to anybody who wants one. I, I'll put my link to my Instagram in the description below. So you can go ahead and send me a message on there uh, to schedule our first free coaching call. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Take care.